And we are back with the last presentation from our session today. Um, and it's my pleasure to invite David Signer from the OpenGIS team. And he's going to give us a comprehensive overview on everything that is happening with QField. So David, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, welcome everyone to my presentation about QField. I'm David Signer. I'm a programmer, developer, and coordinator for QField at OpenGS.ch. We are um, 13 geospatial experts located in Switzerland, and everything we do, whenever possible, uh, we release with an open source license. So, why QField? Um, it's because the data is outside the office. Sometimes we do have sensors that deliver us the data directly to QField, but mostly we have to rely on brave people being outside in whatever weather condition, standing knee deep in the mud, collecting the data for us. And all these people want to be it efficient. They want to collect our data and go home as soon as possible. So, uh, the missing bit in QGIS is that it's not mobile. And that's when QField hits the stage. QField is QGIS made for tablets. And this means it's the mobile data collection app for QGIS. Um, QField uh, is based on some principles, like for example, um, that we want to keep the UI intuitive and simple. Because um, every time when we introduce a new functionality needing a new button, we have a lot of discussions if this button really needs to be there. Because when you're out on the field, you don't want to fool around with an overloaded screen. You just want to see the buttons you are currently needing. Then uh, we allow people to use beautiful cartography. That means if when your map looks great on QJS, it looks great on QField as well, because QField is using the full QJS rendering engine. Then just because we keep the UI simple, that does not mean that uh, QField lacks of tools. We just only show the buttons uh, when they are really needed. For example, here on the bottom right, you see the, the buttons for the geometry editing. And these are uh, displayed now when I'm in geometry editing mode. And after that, they will be hidden again. Then. As I said, uh, field workers want really to be efficient and fast and effective. And so we have a lot of features to provide that. Like for example, here in the background, you will see a movie about it later on. You can select multiple feature and edit attributes at all of them at the very same time. Or for example, you can uh, um, remember values from a previously added feature and so on. Then there is a beneficial integration. We have uh, integration of, you can use the camera, for example, or you can open uh, documents, attached files by other apps directly from QField, um, call them other apps. Then uh, professional hardware makers are starting to deliver really cool Android devices. Um, on these devices, you have better reception, for example, or you can use external GNSS antennas. And we are working together with the companies like Trimble, like you see here on the background, or for example, Emlit. And um, we will see a movie about that as well, how we connect directly to an Emlit reach and MEA receiver uh, from QField. Then we have a cloud solution. It's to exchange your project and your data between uh, your mobile device and your office. You can synchronize whenever you want and wherever you are and it takes care about all this data and the data of your colleagues as well so let's go quickly through the workflow um, the team leader 
prepares uh, the project on QGIS and uh, optimizes it for the mobile use with the help of the QPhil Sync plugin. And then she uploads the project to the cloud. Or because it's, uh, of course, not mandatory to use the cloud, she can directly copy it to the devices. Then the field workers um, don't need to care about any configuration. They just collect the data, digitize geometry, make pictures, and so on. And then with a simple click, they can synchronize the data back to the office again. Then what's in QField? Let's watch some movies now. Um, First uh, thing is that the forums are really optimized for the mobile use. You see here the range widget, you might know it from QGIS, or um, uh, value relation widgets, relation reference, or for, for example here, when you enter a text in the text field, then the text uh, keyboard is opened on numeric fields, then the numeric keyboard is open, and uh, yeah, everything optimized for tablets and phones. Then another cool thing is the conditional visibility. You might know that from QGIS as well. Um, when a beehive is infected, then you need uh, to specify the disease. Otherwise, it does not uh, overload the form um, unneeded. Then a pretty new thing is, is the on-the-fly update of values, the uh, default values that will be updated on editing. Like here, when you change the data, the picture change, or you can make some calculations and so on, and you have the on-the-fly update. Then um, there is the integration of the camera and the special QML and HTML widgets. Here you can open the native camera from QField. Here the recorder app acted a little bit weirdly and changed the orientation, but QField stayed all the time in landscape mode. Then um, below there is an attachment, a PDF. It opens directly with your um, PDF uh, app you have installed on your device. Then there are these two uh, fancy widgets, QML widget and HTML widget to make some visualization. You can code there with QML, some nice charts considering data from the current feature, or you can uh, code HTML to, for example, make some interactive information texts and so on. Then I mentioned that before, there is the multi-attribute editing. That means you can select multiple features on the canvas, then check them if you want to consider them in the, in the update. And after that, you um, can change a value for all of them. Here as well, you can add some more by tipping on the canvas. And now you can uh, choose the field you want to change, the beekeeper. Now um, you can enter here the name. Lucy enters her name. She owns now all the beehives. Then you might know the relations from QGIS. Um, I give you a little bit the context of the project to understand the following movie. Uh, there are beehives and there are fields, and we want to record how much percent from what field is consumed. Means it's a many-to-many -many relation, and uh, we show you here the relation editor, which is optimized for Q field uh, for mobile use. Then you have here the re reference table with the percentage attribute, and you can add new parents um, the, from the layer field. Then there is another uh, nice thing. It's um, in QGIS, there is the ordered relation editor plugin uh, where you can make orders of the child features. And this is supported in QField as well. Here you can make an order. You can uh, move the child features up and down or with drag and drop or using these uh, small arrows.
Then uh, another very useful thing is the auto completion. Uh, when you have long lists in value relations or refer uh, relation references, then um, it's hard to find the value. But with this search, it's uh, pretty easy just to type in the begin of the word. And so you can find it very fast. Then you can not only open a QGIS projects with QField, you can open as well uh, the data sources directly, like for example, a geo package in this uh, video here. When you open the geo package, then you see here that uh, the, the spatial tables are displayed on the canvas. When you edit the data there, you see that the constraints from uh, defined on the data source are considered as well, like here with the number of boxes that has a not null constraint. As well, you can open uh, raster data like this georeferenced TIFF here. And when it's georeferenced uh, correctly, then it's displayed nicely in the project. Then there are the map sims. This is an awesome thing from QJS to define the lay uh, different layouts and you can switch between them, uh, set visibility or symbologies of the layer and QField supports them uh, pretty nicely. And so you, yeah, it's a useful thing as well. Then there is a search in QField for attributes and coordinates. Here, for example, we search for Stephen Hawking. It, you might know him. It's a very, very famous uh, beekeeper. You can jump directly to the coordinates of his beehive, or you can open the form um, directly from the search. Then you can uh, search as well for coordinates um, to jump on this specific position. Like this. There is the measuring tool. It's um, a tool where you don't uh, store any data. You just receive the coordinates, or you can draw a line, and then you see the length of the of the um, of the complete line or of each segment. And as soon as you have more than two vertices, you can uh, cal have calculated the area here as well. Then um, we come to the geometry editing functionality. If you have existing uh, geometries, you can edit them. You can, for example, here uh, split it into two features. Or if you then, if you're not happy with it, you can merge them back together again. And there are other um, functionalities, like you can uh, cut out the hole in the middle and fill it with a new feature, or leave leave it like uh, the hole, like a donut. Here, you can of course uh, move vertices or remove vertices um, or add new vertices. Let's jump for that to the next video. Here, um, it shows how it's used the uh, moving of um, vertices together with the topological editing. Um, when we go now to a vertex here and we go close to the, another vertex of um, another feature, then it snaps to the very same coordinates. Maybe you see it here a little bit better when you go closer. Yeah, and then snap. And the cool thing now is that when we change the vertex from the left field, from the dandelion field, then, and we change a vertex that is uh, connected to another vertex of the grass field, then both of them are moved. If your device supports it and you have a stylus pen, then you can draw freehand like this. Let's add one field. And uh, this 
functionality here can be used uh, uh, with the topological editing as well to avoid overlaps, for example. Like we see in the, we activate it and then we draw it. And here we are. Then uh, GPS uh, is uh, for localization used and uh, we have a tracking integration. You can track a line, you can enter a time interval or a minimum distance where the um, vertex need to be stored. And then you can set the attributes for that feature that is collected, in this case, the line, and then it um, collects the way you are walking. And here, as I promised before, we show how to connect directly to an Namlet Reach RS2 NMEA receiver via Bluetooth. We select the device and then we pair it. And depending on the device, uh, you can enter the PIN code for that. And after that, it starts to connect. Now you see there are a lot of lot more information, and then uh, after it's successfully connected, you see that, for example, the accuracy is uh, um, increasing pretty much. It's a one centimeter. And the last video I want to show you now is uh, about the print atlas. Printing with QField has been possible quite some time ago, but atlas printing is uh, a little bit newer. You can um, even, if you configured the project correctly, you can uh, select several features and then print the atlas only, only for the selected features. Like for example, here you can open it then the PDF exported, looking exactly the same like the export on QGIS and with the features you chose before. That's it from the video. Let's um, uh, give some more news. Um, the QField Cloud, we had a talk before from Marco. If you missed it, you need to watch it. Um, I can say about it that it's coming very, very soon. And it's, uh, uh, we are daily activating uh, beta tester accounts and we are looking very forward to it. Then uh, QField runs on Windows and QField runs as well on iOS. Both um, is in beta as well, but if you cannot wait, it will be released pretty soon. But if you like to test it out, then feel free to go to qfield.org slash get and download the uh, QField for your specific system. The current release is 196 Taiwas Kero. We have 400,000 of downloads on Android and 110,000 of monthly users. So, yeah, don't test today. It, um, uh, you see, you will be in good company by a lot of other users, at least for Android, like you can see here and it's open source and it's a really great tool and if you like it then you can help us by telling your story show us how you use qfield or you can become a beta tester and report the bugs and have all the nice feature before everyone else or you can even fix box yourself or finance box fixing or create new um, ideas you want to have in QField. We are happy about any kind of support. Or if you need something more specific, then um, you can invest in your custom app. So we can create a QField version especially for you. And that's it from my presentation. Thanks a lot for listening and uh, we
have maybe some questions. Yes, we do. Thank you for the presentation. So uh, I'll start with a question. The first one, the most voted one is, how do you handle conflicts on synchronization? For example, some features edited by two users. Is there support for versioning? Well, um, this uh, question considered mainly the cloud. I hope that one of my colleagues um, that is more uh, in the cloud uh, semantic can reply to it in the chat. And otherwise I can uh, provide a reply to it because I don't know the current state, how we did it. I, I think it considers the cloud, this question. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, then let me jump to the next question. Um, so, um, can we capture video as well as images? Um, honestly, I never tried. I don't think so. No, not yet. Okay, next question will be um, how do you prepare raster maps optimized format to export to QField and QGIS cloud less than five megabytes um i don't know it by heart how to optimize it but we do have um, a blog post how uh, you best create your um, rosters uh, i can check it out and post it to the chat later on mm -hmm. okay um we have another one can you record gps tracks and points i believe you answered this one uh so what we do currently is uh, we 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 uh, um, we store lines and you can uh, draw it with uh, polygons as well. Um, point layers um, are a little bit more complex because there you would need to um, uh, enter the attribute values for each point, and so this is more a conceptual thing that we have to find out how we can do that, or in case someone is um, interested in invest on collecting single points, then yeah, we we are looking forward to it. Okay, uh, next question. <laughs> Does QField support premium base mapping APIs such as uh, Ordnance Survey Master Map? Um, can you please repeat it? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, does QField support uh, premium base map APIs, such as Ordnance Survey Master Map? I'll also write it in our chat. So, mm -hmm. see it. As far as I know, it does not, but I, yeah. Okay, um, then uh, I'll, I'll get to the next voted question. Can you extend Q field with Python? Yeah, you, uh, uh, you mean with Python plugins that you can write? Python plugins, I, I suppose this is uh, the question, and, and it's uh, not or not yet provided like that. Um, but yeah, it's a nice idea. Okay. Uh, a lot of interesting discussions in the chat as well. <laughs> uh, and we have another nice question How can I donate to make Q feel better? <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's a really co cool question. Um, I um, will quickly show you what would be the, the, the best way to do it. Is um, We have here our QField repository on GitHub. And um, then uh, here are the issue lists where everyone 
writes down the issues he has and we are um, giving feedback and try to fix it. And here is a sponsoring option, the, the huge, um, uh, the, the GitHub sponsoring options. And here, um, if we sponsor, if you, you could sponsor here uh, an amount, a small amount if you want, per month, because there is a lot of work um, uh, in Q field that needs to be done in the background. And of course, we can sell shiny new features, pretty cool and got the support, but a lot of work we just uh, do um, from ourselves to, to to keep the, the app stable and so on. And so, yeah, we would be really happy about uh, sponsoring directly here. And here, when you sponsor it um, over the Q field, uh, GitHub repository, uh, um, it's uh, the money goes to Qfield. It doesn't does not go just to OpenGIS in general. It goes to Qfield. Okay, thank you. And also to those posting questions, take a look in the chat. Indeed, David's colleagues are very <laughs> are very active answering questions and so on. Uh, so. Um, I see no more question in the question tab. Uh, no more, um, no more uh, questions in the chat either. So, um, uh, David, if there is nothing you'd like more to add, um, then we can rush to the main uh, Malena Liebman uh, stage for uh, for the next Phosphor G keynote. So, um, is there something you'd like to add in in the end? <laughs> um, well, I didn't thought about a nice ending sentence, but yes, <laughs> if if you didn't check it out yet, Q filled and check it out. It's so easy and so much fun to 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 use and enjoy it. And yeah. Oh, and just one last question: What is better, Q filled or input? We can well, um, I'm sure both are better than the <laughs> other <laughs> unnamed alternative. No, um, seriously, uh, I don't know input uh, good enough to judge it. And of course, I'm a little bit, um, I have my position of view. So of course, I say Q field, but I cannot uh, uh, blame input to do anything wrong and honestly I, I don't know it good enough so yeah it's hard to reply but feel free to test it out yourself and yeah touch yourself a great great answer thanks david thanks very much so um enjoy phosphor g and see you around on the virtual map all right thank you very much Have thank you time. Bye. And Bye. thank you, everyone, for watching this session. Uh, and um, enjoy Phosphor G, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>